Hey everyone, this is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo, and welcome to another tutorial on Bootstrap 3. In this one, we're going to be covering popovers. So let's go ahead and take a look at what a popover is, first of all, and we'll see how we can actually start building it. We're just going to keep it very basic in this video, and then hopefully in future videos, we'll talk about how you can customize and use some other stuff. So in, let's show an example, and you can go to my website, learningdojo.net, and search through my blog and find this example. You can also find online courses at learningdojo.net. You can find courses on jQuery, on interactive HTML5, Edge Animate, Hype, different things like that. So let's go ahead and actually come in and see exactly what we're going to be building in this tutorial. So you can see that we can have a pop-up. Now this is a customized pop-up, just some customization that was added. You don't really have to go this intense with the dotted lines and everything. Just wanted to show you what you can do. And you can see that there's other pops up You and you can pop up uh, custom HTML inside of this as well. So we're going to actually learn about how to trigger that pop-up and how to use those pop-ups inside of Bootstrap. So I'm going to go ahead and come over to my project here. And this is just a sample project and I'm using Sublime Text. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this up inside of my HTML editor as well. All right, so now I have it in my HTML editor. So whenever I start adding some text in there, it will show up inside of here. So I'm gonna switch back over to Sublime. And you can see that I have three things attached. I have, first of all, the Bootstrap CDN for their CSS file. Now you can download that and put it internally inside of your project, or you can just point to their CDN. And you can also do that with jQuery. I have the jQuery one, and then I have the Bootstrap JavaScript as well. I've also created inside of this JS folder, I've created my own JavaScript file with just a ready event for now, a jQuery ready event. So we're gonna place some code inside of that jQuery ready event once we get to it. So that's pretty much all that I have. And then inside of my body text, I really have nothing at this point. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and add an H3 tag, and I'm just gonna add a title here. And that title is going to be bootstrap popover. And then well, let's actually wrap this up inside of a container. So I'm going to use a bootstrap container. So I'm adding a div tag and then a class of container. And I'm going to take that container, the end tag there, and I'm actually going to place it after that H3 tag. So everything that we're going to be building is inside of that container. If I come back in here and I preview this, you'll notice the container adds a little bit of margin on the left and the right as well. And so there's our heading right there. So what we need to do is then add some text, some links right below that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to add an, ink, an anchor tag with an href. And so let's go ahead and right now, I'm just gonna add a pound side. I, I don't really have any place that that's gonna to go to at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that as a pound sign. Now what's important with the popover is I actually have to add on some data tags. So the first data tag that I'm going to add is going to be a data.toggle equals, and then in quotes, I'm gonna go ahead and say popover. Now this really could be whatever you wanted to name it. It's just, it's important to know whatever you name it here is going to be inside of the JavaScript. Now you can also, if you have more than one popover, you can use the same data toggle or if you wanted to trigger it in a different way, you can actually do that as well. So it's very open as far as what you can do. So that's the first thing I need to do is add this data toggle popover. The second thing I need to do is I need to add some content for the popover. And you do that by adding an attribute, two different attributes. The first one is going to be a title attribute. And we're gonna go ahead and say popover content. And the second one is going to be a data dot dash content. So data dash content. This is going to be what's in the content section of the popover. So I'm going to say equals and then two quotes there. And then I'm going to say this is the content section for the popover. You can just type in whatever text you want on the popover. Now the anchor tag needs to have some actual text in there. So we're going to say toggle. Let's call this one regular popover. Excuse my typing, it's hard for me to see the keyboard here. So there we go, I think we're good there. If I was to preview this, all I would see is actually a link right there. So it really doesn't do anything at this point. What we need to do at this point is we need to add some simple JavaScript inside of our JavaScript file. And the simple JavaScript that I need to add is just a pop or something to trigger the popover. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to point to that popover 
And I'm gonna do that by saying, okay, within quotes, I'm using the jQuery selector, but within quotes, I'm gonna have brackets there and I'm gonna say data dash toggle equals, let's have these actually be single quotes at the end and then we'll have double quotes inside of there. You can do the opposite. You can do double quotes at the end, uh, the beginning and the end, and then you just have to do whatever is on the outside needs to be different on the inside. So now we're gonna say, okay, popover. Anything that has this data dash toggle popover, this is going to trigger the popover. So at the end of this, we're gonna go ahead and say popover and then open close parentheses and then end that with a semicolon. And that's pretty much all that I have to do. So anything that's gonna have this data toggle popover is going to trigger this popover no matter what popover it is. So you can have several different popovers, but now if I come over here and click on this, you can see there's my popover. Well, it looks like I got something messed up here. So let's go into the HTML. Oh, it looks like I misspelled content. All right, now let's try this again. There we go. So we have our popover title and then we have our popover section. So that's a simple initial popover. If you wanted to trigger that popover, this is how you would do it and this is where you'd place your content. Okay, so right now I have my content popping over on the right hand side and that's what it usually does by default. But let's say I wanted to have this popover on the bottom or the top or the left. Well, you can do that with another attribute by saying data dash placement not an equal sign, a dash. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say bottom. Now if I hit refresh, come over here and click on the button again, the content is now placed below the actual link there. Now I can also specify where exactly I want this pop-up to happen, that's up to you, but for now that's actually the placement I can place at the bottom, I can place at the top, I can place on the left, I can place on the right, those are my different options. For now, that's just, uh, I wanted to make sure that you're aware of that, but let's go ahead and actually show how to trigger it just on a hover. Because right now I have to actually click on it for it to pop up. Let's say once I hover over it, let's say I want that to actually pop up on hover. Well, I need to come in here and add one more attribute. So I'm gonna come in here and add another attribute. And I'm gonna say data-trigger, and this is gonna be equals, and then next, uh, the quotes, and we're gonna go ahead and say hover. Now if I hit refresh over here, it's going to trigger this. I'm not clicking on it, but it's gonna trigger it as soon as I hover over it. So that's another option. If you wanted to have it just hover, if this is gonna link somewhere else, this might be a useful option. And so when the person hovers over it, then it will actually show the content. Now if I move my mouse out, the nice thing is that content automatically goes away. I don't have to click the button again. Let's say I didn't wanna have all my title and my content all in the same area. So if you have that all inside of the attributes, it could get pretty messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. And I'm actually going to add my JavaScript. In my JavaScript, I'm going to add the title and I'm going to add the content dynamically. And I can do that when I call the popover, if you add curly brackets in between those parentheses, you can actually add on some additional content, some additional properties. And those properties can be the title and it can be the content along with some other things. So if I come in here and I just say title, and then let's do a colon, we're gonna in quotes say this, or let's call this just header. And then after the comma here, let's insert a comma. We're still in the curly brackets, but let's go ahead and say, okay, the content colon is in quotes, this is the content. Now if I go ahead and hit preview again, you can see that as I hover over this, my header and my content are now inside of there. And that's just basically, if I did not want to trigger or have inside of my attributes, inside of my HTML, all the titles and headers for that, then that's another way of doing it. A Couple of other options you'll notice, as soon as I hover over this, it kind of animates in. If I don't want that to animate, there is another attribute that I can add on to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add on a comma, and then we're gonna add an animation attribute, and I'm gonna say this is going to be false. And now if I hit refresh over here, you can see it no longer animates in, it just kind of pops in. 
And so that's one option. If you want it to animate, it already animates by default. But if you don't want it to animate, then you just add on an animation fault. I kind of like the animation myself, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that there. But I can also add a delay, and I can say, hey, I want this to delay, and this is in milliseconds, so I want to delay this for a second here. And so 1000 is one second, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and preview. And as soon as I hover over here, you see that it delayed for one second. You can also delay the hiding of the object as soon as you move out. You can delay that if you wanted to as well. So let's go ahead and add on one, mat, one more attribute and I'm gonna say hide and that's also gonna take a second to hide as well. So if I hit refresh, it's gonna take a second to pop up. If I move out, it's gonna stay there for a second and then animate out. So those are a couple other attributes that I can add onto my popover. Let's say in my header or my content, I actually want to add on some HTML. So I'm gonna say, okay, well, let's add on, let's bold this right here. And so let's go ahead and add on the ending bold tag, just a simple bold tag. If I hit refresh, what's gonna happen is you can see that the HTML doesn't actually render correctly. And so I need to add on one more attribute here is I actually need to add on an HTML and then true. This means that any of the contents inside of the popover is going to render as HTML. So let's go ahead and hit refresh. Now if we have this pop up, you can see that the tags are no longer there, but my this word is actually now bolded. And I can pretty much do whatever I wanted to. The example that I showed at the very beginning, this is me kind of going crazy with the popover, adding on some dashboards. Again, check out my website. You can see at the popover, I added on a border of two. I uh, made it dotted, I added a background for the title, so popover dash title. You can add a background or other CSS popover content as well. Let me expand this out. And then the arrow, which shows up right here, I added a, a border right color. And you can do more with that if you wanted to. You can add adjust the drop shadow by adding the drop shadow on the popover. So there's just a lot of flexibility there if you get into the CSS. So that's just some of what you can do with the popover. If you wanna check out more, I highly recommend you check out my website at learningdojo.net and look through all the different Bootstrap options. Check out my upcoming course on Bootstrap as well. So feel free to leave a comment in here, ask any questions that you want, or go to my website and get some free downloads or check out this code as well. Download this code that I'm using so you can take a look at it as well. So thank you everyone. And again, if you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well.